Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee meeting. Today is July the 18th, 2022, and we do have a quorum, and I call this meeting to order. First order of business is I need a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. A second. I have a motion and a second. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, so the big main event this evening, and we'll get right into it. Uh, we're gonna talk about the ball league. As everybody knows, uh, the Tennessee Strikers was let go. And uh, David, it's my understanding that David and Andrew has been working diligently on, uh, di <laughs> working hard on a uh, plan for the uh, ball league. So we'll just turn it over to you guys and uh, fire away. Well, we, we think we've got a plan in place. Um, we've got some participation here locally. We're always looking for more um, volunteers from coaches and parents that participate in the league. Our plan is to hold uh, several clinic nights on Thursdays from 6 p.m. starting September 15th, every Thursday through um, October the 6th. Um, we are going to have online signups for those kids so we can get some participation, kind of gauge how much interest we're going to have in that. And then after those four clinic days, we're planning on having a game day, Saturday, October the 8th. Um, your paperwork may say 9 to 11. We may do that 9 to 12. Um, park staff will be providing lunch that day for – David, David, hold on just a second. You can – I'm trying to write. So Saturday, October the 8th from when? From 9 to 11, and that may be on that last page that you have in your packet. Oh, it's yeah. on the application. Yeah, it's on the registration. I did not see that. <laughs> yeah, you got it lined up. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. So our plan is hopefully to utilize all eight fields. As of right now, we have uh, Coach Jackson from Rock Springs Middle has agreed to come out and host the – um, clinic on the softball side. We have reached out to Laverne High School's baseball coach and Lancaster's coach, um, Coach Horner, to hopefully um, do the baseball side of the clinics. Um, so we're still looking for a host there. If not, we'll take that upon ourselves and do that in-house. But as of right now, that's our plan. Thursday nights um, beginning September 15th from 6 p.m. 8 p.m. Um, October the 6th with a game day on Saturday, the October the 8th. Um, on the, we should have this live tomorrow, hopefully. This will hit the um, web, Facebook, city page. It's a registration form here for the participants. Um, kids to sign up, their parents to sign them up, T-shirt sizes, so we want to make sure we get all of that information and have that. Um, so we can provide um, shirts for each kid. Um, there'll be no charge for the clinics. Just something to try to get us through the fall to keep the interest there so we don't lose these kids come springtime. Great. So I'm sure that, uh, <clears throat> I know I do. Uh, I sure, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions, so there they are, fire away. Uh, and when we're talking about a clinic, that's you know, this is for. I know if we can get teams that have participated in the spring to bring their whole team, that's fine also. But we may have kids that have never stepped on a field before, so these clinics are going to be for all different skill levels. So we're going to try to use a lot, utilize every field. Um, we may be have hitting off a tee, soft toss. We may have field and grounders, pop flies, um, your basic skills. Um, then if we have kids that are more skilled, then we'll kind of filter them into a different category. So that's kind of where your parents and your previous coaches are going to come in to hand to kind of hit, lend us a hand there. So um, that's our plan now. Like I said, we'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. And this is all free. All free, free yes, Free T-shirt, all of that. Free shirt. Parks will be providing lunch on that last Saturday, the game day. So... Um, yeah, we want to make it a fun experience and try to keep these kids and have them come around back around in the spring. And it is baseball and softball? Baseball and softball. Um, coach Jackson is the softball coach at Rock Springs Middle. She's going to come out and host the softball side. Is that Sonny? Yes, sir. That's Mike Walker's daughter. Mm -hmm. Anybody didn't know that. 
And these kids have to be residents of Laverne, is that correct? We're not gonna turn away any kids. Okay. Um, you know, we want everybody to participate. In the past, we've had kids come from Antioch, Smyrna to join our league. Um, I know they have kids in the football league from different cities, so we're not gonna turn anybody away. And is this we, would prefer on, we would prefer online registration, right. but if a, if a child shows up and a parent shows up and they haven't registered, we're gonna have, we're gonna have these forms available on site also. Are these co-ed teams? As of now, no. The game day may be, depending on how things go and how, how many participants we have. We'd kind of like to split it up into a, a baseball section and a softball section. So the softball um, coach can kind of focus on that where she, where she may be more comfortable with. Right. So as of now, they are not, but that is a possibility. Right. But if you're splitting up baseball and softball, would softball still be boy-girl playing? together or is it just all girls softball all boys softball and all girls baseball you know and i think that would probably end up to the parents because we haven't really discussed that road mm -hmm. been down that road yet mm -hmm. traditionally you know the softball is geared towards the girls but if we don't have enough kids to to field a team then we may um right. kind of co-edit mm -hmm. age group age group the kids, the boys are 12 and under, because that's all our fields will hold. They're 200, 220 foot fence. And the girls, we are focusing at 16 and under. Softball, two, 16 and under. Softball, 16 under, yes, sir. And is there a deadline <laughs> to register by? We were thinking two weeks before the Thursday, I believe that's what we were looking at, just so we can get the shirts ordered. Um, even given, even that, with that being said, we're not going to turn anybody away. So we just, we want the dead, we don't necessarily want a deadline. We're putting it out there just so we know we get the right size shirts for right. kids. Um, even at that, if they come up day of, we will have extra shirts, not guaranteeing they're going to fit because we don't know what sizes to order. You know, that's kind of why we want to put the deadline on here, just so we know the kids are getting the right size shirt. And have we looked at sponsors? We haven't had any sponsors yet, besides the City of Laverne and the Park and Rec Department. Um, is that an option? It is an option, yes, okay. ma'am. Yeah. So now, are, are, oh, go sorry. ahead, go ahead. Are y'all going to try and reach out to any of the coaches that um, – we're on the spring ball league to see if they want to come out and volunteer. Yeah, we would love to. Um, I think we may have a email list uh, yeah. with those. Um, yeah, provided it. If they can bring their whole, their team out and keep their team out, we would love to have that participation mm -hmm. because they're going to be the ones that are going to be there in the spring. Yeah. Okay. Because I know. So I think it would come better from. It would probably come better from a coach that ha that the kids are familiar with trying to teach the skills rather than Andrew, myself, or, you know, the vice mayor, which we're not opposed to getting out there and helping. Mm -hmm. um, we have several members on our staff that um, have a baseball background, we have several uh, city employees that have played some college ball. So if we had to take that on ourselves, we could do that in-house and we would be comfortable with it. Um, so we're just trying to provide something, you know, kind of not really organized, but semi-organized. So I see we have the application for the kids. Could we put together an application for volunteers to help at the park, to take the load off of you? Um, there are, while you may have the coach, maybe his wife or his brother wants to come out and help. Is there an application we can throw in for that? Um, do we need to make that a separate app or could we add it to this one? Um, I would think a separate app because you might have people who volunteer that don't have children participating. So yeah, we will work on that in the, tomorrow morning. Hopefully, this we can get this um, live tomorrow and start getting some feedback. Thank you. All right, I have several questions. You all know me. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. The first one is a is a comment about to everybody and folks listening here and at home is uh this is definitely new 
so it's going to have some hiccups. But uh, hopefully with this uh, training scrimmage that this will give the city time to put out an RFP and get it back and then have everything ready for spring ball so that when, when we get ready for spring ball, everything will be set. We will have somebody that's going to take over the league, somebody that's going to be in charge, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, be before I say anything else, and, and I'll probably have to refer to the mayor if I can do this, if, if one of these coaches, Jason, wants to if we can bring them up here, see if they have any questions. Do, do I need to suspend the rules or can they just come up? Okay. It, do you all have any questions? Chris, Anna, Miss Hope, Rick, anybody? Come on up to the microphone and. Uh, Good evening. I did have one question. You talked about sponsorship. Yes, ma'am. When and how will you solicit sponsors to help support this effort? Well, the thing about sponsorships is we, we would love to take any sponsorships that we can. Um, and everything comes out of the park and rec department unless a sponsor will pay directly for a service, like the T-shirts. Um, unless we got a sponsor that would purchase those shirts individually on behalf of the city, um, that money would come out of the general fund and the sponsorship mm -hmm. money would just go back into the general fund. Gotcha. Um, ideally, that would be great for us because as of now, it's, everything we do is coming out of the park's budget. Um, none of this was really budgeted for, so unless the park's budget can mm -hmm. absorb those costs by the end of the fiscal year, um, a budget amendment may be having done, to be done somewhere down the line. So if you knew a sponsor that was saying, we don't, we don't even know how many shirts we're going to We may have $2,500 in shirts. We may have, hopefully, we'll have 250 kids. We'd love to see all these kids come out. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, any sponsorship money, unless they pay for something directly, um, would go back into the general fund. Okay. But that would be, you know, that would be budgeted for um, on down the line. But any sponsorship that came through, if we had it in time, their name would go on the back of the T-shirt. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, my next question, uh, and, and I'm not trying to, to, to put you under the gun or anything, uh, is there any way to start that any sooner and or is there any way to have more games or scrimmages? Um, we had only talked about four weeks we may be able to look at extending that. We were trying to fit that in between events that we already had going on in the park, um, you know, because OTF falls right, uh, yeah, right after that first, first night. OTF falls. That's on Thursday. OTF starts on the 17th. The 16th is a concert. So we were trying to fit that in between events we already had in the park. We can definitely look at maybe adding some more. Um, yeah, it's kind of up in the air right now. Okay. We knew fall league was always shorter, a shorter time frame, and we didn't know what kind of um, feedback we were going to get or participation. So if we get, you know, if we get quite a bit of um, positive feedback and a bunch of kids showing up, then definitely we could look at, you know, extending it. So when October the 8th rolls around and it looks like the weather is going to be decent, we may be able to maybe go another week or two? Or? Yeah, if, if that's what the volunteers and, and kids were up to, definitely. Okay. Uh, I, I think you guys have, have done a great job with this. I know it's been an absolute mess for a while, and I know uh, I appreciate all your, all your hard work. And uh, when it comes to uh, volunteers, I talked to several kids that I personally coached that played college ball. They said that they'd be more than happy to come down and work with pitchers and catchers, teach them how to rock step, how to slide step uh, with some of the older boys. You know, girls, I don't, I can't, I can't help you. <laughs> you know, 
what little bit I know you could put on the end of a thimble. So, but uh, anyway, is, is there any more questions about this? And because here's what's going to happen. There's going to be a thousand questions coming at us. Uh, I'm hoping that a lot of people will uh, watch this at home. We've got some coaches here tonight that will be spreading the word and, and uh, hopefully they'll understand and uh, we can we can get these things going. And, and hopefully, like you said, David, keep the kids interested, keep the parents interested, keep the coaches interested until we can get that RFP out there. And uh, is Bruce working on that? Yeah, Yes, sir. It should go out um, Tuesday, July 26th. That's the tentative plan now. Um, should stay out four weeks. Um, open on August the 23rd. Don't know how many participants we'll get or organizations put in for that. I think uh, city administration would prefer for um, the staff to kind of go through and pick the top three to four and then have those come to present before you guys and take your recommendation before the board. Um, so we could possibly have somebody in front of this board at the September 19th meeting and then in front of the Board of Mayor and Alderman workshop on the 29th, and then hopefully for approval October 6th. So I think if we get somebody in place by October 6th, I think that's good timing. That'll give them at least two months, uh, well, actually three, October, November, and December, to get their stuff in order for signups in January. So I think the way that's going to fall, if, you know, if we can get the participation, that, that should be plenty of time for a successful spring. Mm -hmm. All right, so before we move on to the next item, is there any questions? You all sure you don't have any questions? <laughs> I do have one. Um, basically, hold on, get up there. Where we can hear you, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, basically, my question for you is the clinics were going to be two hours long. Is that going to be two hours long for the for each player? Like, we ha would it be on the field for two hours with each kid, or is that going to be broken up like an hour for one per? group and an hour for another how were you planning? our plan is to have each kid on the field for two hours okay um, so we depending on how much participation we have we may have several different activities going on at the same field with different groups of kids I think it's possible you could take infield practice and outfield at the same time mm -hmm. um, so you can have two different sets of kids doing that on the same field you may have uh, soft toss into the backstop or hitting off a tee into the backstop so you could have several kids doing that because I think we're going to end up having like 12 tees, 20 tees. Um, so I think you can have different skills going on the same field at the same time with, with different sets of kids. Our plan is to have every kid on the field for two hours. Okay. And who would be a point of contact to, like, sign up for, like, volunteering and stuff? Would it just be you or would it be someone? No, it would be um, you could call our office or the uh, online form should be available tomorrow. Okay. That's pretty much it. So awesome. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, David, uh, it sounds like, I'm sorry, go ahead. One more. So when we go live tomorrow, there will be the application process for the child. There will be an application for the adult volunteers. And then will there also be a link somewhere if you wanted to be a sponsor? So make sure it's all in one place so they don't, have to run to three to four different things it's all right there mm -hmm. so yep. if you wanted to be a sponsor da, 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 da. yep we, will, we can add that too um sorry kathy no nope. well we'll get our <laughs> stuff we'll, we'll get our stuff together in the morning and then mm -hmm. run it by the city's um pio okay just so she can approve it because she'll probably be the one posting mm -hmm. it anyway okay thank you very much i know that uh I know that Bruce is a stickler for this. So what about uh, the liability and all of that, everything? Um, on this registration form, there is a waiver to be signed. So that's our general waiver we use for most of our events. So that should pretty much cover us. All right, anything yep. else? At the bottom. Now, like I said, we're not gonna turn any kid away, whether they fill this form out tomorrow or two days or, or don't fill it out at all. The re really reason for this form is so we can gauge how many shirts we need to order and what size. Any more questions? All right. All right, we will move on to uh, Farmer's Market.
Okay, so farmer's market currently is on Saturdays from eight to noon. Um, wanted to bring it back up to see if maybe you wanted to change it back to Tuesday afternoons based on the foot traffic and the, the vendor numbers that we have going on, or if you wanna just put it out there to see what how you wanted to move forward. Not this season, this season would continue to go for the Saturday mornings. But um, just to get a feel to see how y'all feel about moving it back to Tuesdays. Is it going well on Saturday? Um, it, it's slow. It's slow. It is slow. Is more foot traffic on Tuesdays? Well, uh, about the same. About the same. About the same. Um, but I, I, we probably could get some more produce vendor availability on a Tuesday versus a Saturday. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So... The only, the only drawback that um, when it was on Tuesdays is people getting off work, mm -hmm. driving in from Nashville and stuff, they would not be able to make it before mm -hmm. it shut down at 6 o'clock. Well, so. last, well, what was it, two years ago when we had it on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. it was 3 to 7. Oh, okay. And the, well, it started 3 to 7, and we did change it to 6 because the vendor said they got no foot traffic between 6 and 7, which is why they asked if we could shorten it because they said they weren't getting anything oh. and that they got most of their foot traffic between five and six. So we could revisit that as well. We could start it back out till seven and see how it goes mm -hmm. and try to hit that extra foot traffic. So, and that's just throwing it out there as an idea just to see. Um, we do have um, some, we've been trying to post a little more, uh, get, get it out there a little more. It, we just don't have the foot traffic, unfortunately. You know, we went so. to Saturday. When we went to Saturday, a lot of our vendors that were here on Tuesdays preferred Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, we're going to move it to Saturday. First year, it was it did great. Now we don't have those vendors anymore. So they've either gone out of business for one reason or the other. And it's so hard to get another vegetable vendor. And if you don't have a vegetable vendor, then mm -hmm. it's turned into a flea market. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, you can secure two vegetable vendors. They're fighting for the same traffic, but if you get three, then nobody's making any money. So we kind of like to keep it at two. You have one of them pull out and the other has some family member get sick, then you're stuck with no vegetable vendors at all. So I know Vice Mayor had some concerns a couple of weeks ago trying to uh, increase the foot traffic. So it was moved from back near the pavilion back up to the front. So that may have helped a little bit, um, you know, when we went into this several years ago, we may be, I don't know, six, eight years into this now. We didn't want it to turn into a flea market, which we still don't want it to turn into a flea market, but we're just trying to figure out what we need to do to move this thing forward if we're going to continue with it. So, you know, is Saturday morning the best? I don't know, that's kind of why we brought it before you guys. We don't know. Is, is Saturday, in y'all's mind, still the best? Or is that something we need to revisit about taking it back during the week? I know on Saturday you have to compete with Smyrna and Murfreesboro, and they both have big ones. Well, and apparently Antioch started one this season as well. So. And that's why we first started when we first started. It was on a Tuesday because the vendors we reached out to already had prior commitments somewhere else. So just a thought that the issue we go back and forth with is the lack of the produce vendors and they're all somewhere else mm -hmm. and it's hit or miss on the traffic uh, as a way to possibly get some more people interested could we waive the produce fee so um i mean we probably could but just to get the interest reaching out to the produce vendors there's no availability we don't even get to the fee part of the okay. conversation because they're all at other markets and they don't have an extra person that can add a market that can man a, a new location mm -hmm. so we don't even get to that that part of it so <clears throat> i mean so i had an extensive okay. talk with uh four or five produce people this okay. last week and after i got done talking to them then it all kind of made sense to me uh, especially with the drought, things were not coming in like they had hoped. Correct. 
And then a lot of people thinks that Laverne or whatever is the only place that they set up at, and that's simply not true. They may be in Laverne on Saturday, Nolensville on Sunday, Mount Juliet on, you know, and so on and so forth. And if they don't have enough uh, product to mm -hmm. suffice all of those places, then somebody's going to be left out. And because even though, as David said, we've been here six years or so, we're still very new, so we're going to get left out. Uh, moving it to Tuesday, I didn't, uh, I didn't see that coming, which I think it's a, a good idea to think about. I guess that would be up to you all to see what the numbers were then. Um, uh, I mean, I, the, doing it for the one year of Tuesdays I was there because I was only there one year the foot traffic was about the same as we have now it was the vendor availability is the reason we decided to move it but talking to some of the the vegetable vendors now they're more available on Tuesdays and Saturdays well and then that's what we want to be able to offer well then I think if that's what they told you I think it's pretty much a no-brainer okay. you know yeah. you know and there again, it's certainly not going to happen now, so we can right. talk about this right. as time goes by for sure. Okay. Any more questions? All right, we're on to Howl at the Moon. Who is that? That's me. Okay, so Howl at the Moon, August 19th. We currently have 44 registered. Um, and then, it check, you know, it's Right now, until the end of July, it's $20 to register. There is an online registration option. Um, from August 1st to August 19th, it goes up to $25, and then it's $30 the day of the race. Race starts at 8 p.m. at Veterans Park. All right. That's a night, a night. It is a night race, correct. Mm-hmm. I don't really have any questions about it. It's always kind of a cool event. Yeah. and uh, I know David will be out there running it, so. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Uh, now this I next. I will be running if somebody's chasing me. <laughs> you can find the registration form on the City of Laverne website? Yes, it's, um, there's a link on the Facebook page as well as on the web page. Okay. And this next one's pretty cool. It actually hit the hit the social media today i think it's going to be uh, if david will allow us to have some good weather uh, <laughs> we will i think this will be a, a big thing especially for the children i know a lot of people ask about it i know kathy has worked herself to death trying to get carnals for the last couple of years because of covid and stuff so uh, i think it's going to be good so tell us all about it that's you you okay. worked on it Crescent City Amusements is going to be in Laverne offering the carnival from August 25th to the 27th. Um, in honor of the 50th anniversary, the city is purchasing 250 armbands that they are giving away as a ra raffle, which the re online registration opened today as well. Um, in that, I don't have the dates written down, but there's certain days that you could pick up if you win the raffle to pick them up at City Hall, and then you'll take them to the carnival and turn the voucher in for the armband. Um, they're going to be here Thursday and Friday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and they'll be open that Saturday from noon to 10 p.m. And there's going to be a lot of questions. Tell us exactly how that raffle is going to work. <laughs> that is on. That's going through City Hall, so that's more of an and question to be honest. It's a reg. It's a. Um, she ha she's created some online registration and then it's a random raffle, but that's going to be through the PIO side honestly I'm not quite sure how I know she's randomly picking numbers I guess when you register hold on we have a gentleman number. here that will come up and tell us about it <laughs> I already signed up and did it so it's easy to do all right well Jason will know state your name and uh, address <laughs> Go ahead. And you have three minutes <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so there is a link in the post that is on the city website and on social media. People can register. Um, the city is going to do a raffle for uh, armbands, and 
you can get up to five for a family, I believe, is what the post said. Okay, and um, so if each family gets five, there will be 50 of those. Priority will be given to Laverne residents on the raffle. And um, once we have all of the raffling done, people will be able to pick up the armbands and go from there. How will the how will they pick the winners? It'll be at random, but what they do is they're separated into Laverne residents and non-Laverne residents. Take the Laverne residents first, is put that into a generator. It will okay. kick out who the people are, who are the winners, and then they'll be reached out to from there to determine how many tickets or how many wristbands they'll be wanting and going from there. Wristbands will be available also at the carnival for purchase. They are $20 each. The wristbands that the that are being given away are good for four hours at the carnival for all of the rides, not for the food or the games. So they'll be time stamped. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Well, thank you, sir, for thank explaining you. that. I think I recall seeing that you also, when you come to pick up your wristbands at City Hall, you had to bring uh, your driver's license ID to show that it's you. So please remember that. All right, any more questions? And next is my favorite. I know that uh, Miss Hope will be signing up and Miss <laughs> Ann, uh, the female flag football. Andrew? Uh, female flag football scheduled for September 10th. Um, it's gonna be a 50 yard field right there at Veterans Park in the front field across from the tennis and basketball court. We'll have bleachers, sound system out there. Um, I think Giles is going to give us more of an update on as far as registration and numbers, but we'll have the facilities ready on September 10th. Awesome. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So far, I am still needing information on sponsors. I have two sponsors lined up for jerseys. Um, I still have my, my numbers. I have 30 with possible more. Uh, I need a link maybe to the Laverne site so we can get some sign-ups or give me a sign-up form so I can get that out for you. Kathy's writing down now. All right. Um, <laughs> I've had questions about practice areas. Will, will that be provided or should they find their own place to practice? Like if they're going to come to the park and have a designated time to come practice and starting when and then. Also questions I've had is minimum number of players, not necessarily per team but for the actual Circumstances. I know we talked is looking at a round robin. It's only. That's, to me, I think it will years. depend on. Don't you think it'll depend on how many sign up to have a round robin? Because yeah. it's going to be seven on seven. Okay. You know for sure. Uh, I was telling eleven. Okay, so we do. You seven. want you want to do eleven? I prefer seven on seven. We can get more teams. Yeah, I think seven on seven would be a little bit more less hectic and crazy out there. All right. uh, plus, you know, not as much. <laughs> We have comments in the peanut gallery back there. <laughs> uh, but as far as the practice, David? Well, as far as practice. Andrew, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Our, our Rutherford County Crimson Tide football program practices during the week up there. So that, that might be an issue. When did the schedule start? Like when did the game start for them? They're actually <clears throat> practicing starting right now. Yeah. Their games start, I believe their first game is August 13th on the football field. But, but they use that. <laughs> field that we're talking about for that game for the female flag football they use that field to practice and they also use their big front field so okay but on game days on game, for the crimson they won't be using those no fields, they will not correct? so definitely on saturdays okay probably saturday mornings okay. would be a good day and well you need kathy to create a sign up form to hit social media with or in general or yes just to put on the link of the laverne site yeah how are, how are the teams going to be made? Is it just going to be random pick or? The people the people I have signed up, they're, they're coming in thinking that they're going to be on their own team already. But if, okay. in my mind, to think to make it more camaraderie and fun, maybe draw, you know, get people in a number, have numbers draw. So, you know. Because there, I mean, there's probably, I know a lot of onesies and twosies that really don't have a team but they're wanting to sign up so you know I think the draw would be awesome yeah, do the that. draw then yes, and then are you going to have <clears throat> a deadline for sign up so teams can be made 
Yes. So they can have a couple of practices or? i say maybe the last week in August. I didn't really have a date for that, but i say the last week in August to sign up so I have enough time. That'd be 10 to two full weeks before the game. So like two, two Saturdays. And then Parks and Rec are providing the flags? We have not discussed that, but <laughs> that's something we need to discuss. We need, yeah, we need to discuss who's going to provide the flags. Are those, are those uh, I ain't never bought any, are they They're expensive? They're Velcro. I know what they yeah. are, but are they expensive? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure on that. That might be sponsor money. Uh, also, Andrew, on that game day, can we get uh, some speakers down there? Because I know Rick's going to coach one of the teams. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we can get a, a sound system down there for music and uh, for me to announce. Yeah, we'll get you a tent, table, sound system. Yeah. Have a whole DJ set up. All right. Good. I'm excited. So when, when do you think uh, we should start taking, start getting apps and yeah. sign-ups and as soon as possible. ASAP? As soon as possible. I got a lot of word of mouth, but we had some official. I think it'll make it roll a little faster and a little okay. better. Umpires? I just thought about umpires. He said official, and I said umpires. Have you got umpires? Because you know how some of us women can be. <laughs> do, do you have a start time as far as when, what time you want to start on the 10th? That's a Saturday. I mean, that's a Friday. No, it, it's, oh, it's, a it's a Saturday. I guess it would depend – on round robin or not. If it's a round robin, we'd have to start about eight. But if it's only going to be a couple of games, we could probably, you know, move it up a little bit, depending on. See how many you get signed up first? Yeah, and then, of course, that date right there, it could be blistering hot or it could be snowing. Sure. You know. Or raining. Or raining. Storming. Monsoon rain. But, yeah, we need to start talking that up and getting that ready because I've, I've had some uh, people that's inquired about it and, uh, you know, some ladies that are wanting to play. I'm going to show up and cheer. That's okay with you. I'm just going to cheer. <laughs> that, that'll be good. Medical. <clears throat> and on the, on the sign-up form, I'm assuming, Kathy, there will be a uh, waiver. Yes, well, we'll make sure there's a waiver <laughs> added. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is there an age limit to sign up, Giles? 18. 18? What about old? No, I no. need <laughs> <laughs> And just like with the form you have here, just change it a bit. That's yeah. pretty much what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> She's already got it on her mind. Hey, me? I've had no, it on my mind. No, oh. Kathy. Yeah. I thought I've had this on my mind. Good. So uh, let's see, July. So, so next month's meeting, hopefully we will have some. Yeah, we'll we'll, be we'll have some things to talk about. And we know you're busy, Kathy, and we understand that between you and Sheila, you guys are rock killing it. But uh, I guess we do need to get that started. Okay. You, you know, and we appreciate Sheila coming out to play. That's awesome. All right, we'll move on. <laughs> The only other thing to throw into that, uh, that day, hopefully, knock on wood, if everything goes right, do you think it would be possible to get a, at least one vendor down there for cold drinks or? I can reach know, out to a few and see. Just something. Okay. You know. Drinks. Yeah. <laughs> You took the words right out of my mouth because I was thinking concessions. Yeah, I mean, it don't have to be nothing big, but, I mean, if it goes over, I think there will be a lot of people there. I really do. I really think there will be a lot of people. All right, so we'll move on to the next big event here, the Old Timers Festival. All right. Um, so Old Timers Festival, still working on scheduling. Um, we, you know, we've scheduled Friday night band. It's the World Turning Band, Fleetwood Mac Experience. We've got our... Uh, Saturday Entertainment, uh, we're hoping to get Eagle Maniacs back um, for the Saturday Night Band. It is on the agenda next month. Uh, right now, we've put out the invitations to all the parade and uh, ap applicants, vendors. We have 38 vendors, 11 food vendors already registered. 
We've got five parade registrations we've received. Um, pretty much that's it. We're still, we've got some demonstrations scheduled. We're just still continuing to get in registration forms for the different areas. So. I have been asked about this. Is there going to be a beer garden? He actually told me he was bringing his um, application down to City Hall. Now, I don't. I need to get with Jules to see if he's done it yet. But he does want to do it again, yes. Who's wanting that, Jeremy? Yes, Jeremy. Okay. Now, as far as a beer vendor for the events, um, I, I don't think we have secured that yet. Mm -hmm. So we have had no luck. The establishment changed hands, new ownership. Um, Kathy's reached out to them several times and hasn't had any luck. Right. So if we don't come up with something in the next couple of weeks, then this year we're probably not going to have a beer vendor there selling beer to the public. Because that would have to go before the beer board to get approval, and then it'd have to come back. I don't know if it'd have to come back before you guys, I mean BOMA, because I think that's one of the, does it? I thought that was one of the dates that was secured, so... You know, it'd have to come before several meetings, so I don't, I don't think we're going to have time. So we need to put our thinking hats on and see. I was just going to say, yeah. See who we could, you <laughs> yeah, know. If you have any suggestions, give me a number and I'll call them. Give me a name number, I'll reach out to them. Let's see. Yeah, because moving it up like that, it's going to be warm, and I think they can make some money, plus... I mean, let's call it what it is. A lot of people like to listen to music and have a good cold beer. I mean, it's a fact of life, you know. I'm not advocating drinking and none of that, and that, that'll come back. People say he's talking about <laughs> drinking and stuff, and that's certainly not what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, any more questions? Uh, yeah, I got one. Uh, is the library the only place to get photos from the past old-timers festivals? I went over and combed through everything they had. Okay, that's... Um, that's you know, the only resource I'm aware of. Do okay. you, um, there is a book from the library at our office that you could go through. I'm not sure if it's in, would it have what you're looking for in it. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I went through. It, it, it's kind of sporadic. Right. But know. there is one notebook up at our office from the library that we have. Okay. So you're welcome to come look through it. Okay. okay. And what we didn't hit on is the parade starts at 10. We'll start here at City Hall and end at the park. Um, PD wants us to put a deadline on registrations. Being a election year, um, we always have people show up at the last minute. Some may not even register and show up that morning. So PD wants us to do our best to make sure we have everybody registered by maybe, I think, Wednesday of that week okay. um, for the Saturday parade. Parade going to be the same thing down at here and yes yes mm -hmm. okay. is there is there a fee no not sir. for the parade okay all right any more questions about old timers so we will move on to music in the park October the seventh all right so this year we are scheduling a exactly. music in the park uh, Buddy Jewel. We've reached out. He's available for that day. So we've secured the mobile stage trailer, and we're in the process of securing audio for the band. So Buddy Jewel? Buddy Jewel, correct. He's got a Facebook group. Yeah, Buddy's been around a long time. Uh, he won Nashville Star. Um, I don't know the year, but he did. long time ago. He's he's an older country artist. Got lots of hits. Okay, country. Mm -hmm. He has, and he has he has a wide variety of different kinds of music. So yeah. I've heard him. He's yeah, he's really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What time will that start? Uh, six, seven. Um, yeah, probably seven. That's on a Friday. It's on a Friday. Yes. All right, and now to the last one. Mr. Andrew, we're going to let you, you've been harping on this for years, and we're going to let you fill us in on the dog park. Well, the dog park's nearing completion. We, got yes, a, it is. we have a fence, parking lot. Um, we installed a couple of benches and some trash cans today. Uh, we're planning on installing the water fountains, hopefully this week, early next week, on each side. The We're waiting on dirt. We're getting ready to add some more dirt before we put seed and um, straw down. 
So we're in the closing stages. We'll get the signs. I ordered the brackets today for the signage. So they should be going up within the next couple of weeks. So hopefully mid to late August, we'll be having an opening announcement day. There's been some issues or questions about the fencing. Thank you. So I took it upon myself to go around and talk to the certain areas. First of all, Murfreesboro's got a dog park fence of three feet high. So the height of the fence is not an issue. The second thing is, some people ask me about why didn't we get black coated fencing? Well, two reasons. First reason is it's a whole lot more expensive and the second reason is the black coated fences is nowhere near as good and durable as the galvanized. The galvanized is a better heavy duty fence to whereas the coating is not. Well, you know, the animals get scratched up. I think a lot of issues that people have that the majority of animals that go to dog parks are, are pretty well maintained, well behaved animals or else people wouldn't take them there. If they do, then it's on them. You know, if they're worried about a dog jumping over the fence or digging under a fence, it, hopefully that dog's too busy to even be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So there, those have been some concerns and comments, which uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit. But we're excited about the dog park. I know a lot of people that are. Uh, I know some people, you know, uh, I don't see why we need a dog park, but, you know, that's just the way it is. But uh, so from what I'm hearing, you're kind of hoping by the end of August. Yes, sir. Hopefully by the end of August, the dirt, we're waiting on dirt to come in. Uh, we're going to work with our public works department to get that brought in and spread because there's a lot of rocks and tree roots right now. So we want to kind of make that smooth for the dogs before we put down seed. Because seed's pretty expensive, so we want to do it right the first time. And then also, if you drive by, there's a few spots that underneath the fence, there's a little gap, so we want to get that filled in so no dogs are running in Stones River Road right there. I can tell you those posts they put in are not going anywhere. No, and like I said, it is a, a more commercial-grade galvanized fence than yes, it standard is. residential fence. Yes, it is. Uh, any questions about the dog park? You know where it's at? Yes. <laughs> All right, before we close out this meeting, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Yes, of course I do. So um, I saw today that the survey is out there for people to um, kind of give their opinion on the next park we may get. And so when you click on it, there's three or four different options, but there's not really a descriptive and I didn't... I, I believe there's a link at the bottom that goes to the Blue Cross Blue Shield page, and it, it details each park that, okay. is, that is listed on that. It's survey. the same one that we had it's here. It's the same Correct. Blue Cross Blue yeah, Shield grant that we applied for last August, but there is a link at the bottom of that survey. Yeah, I filled out, I filled out the survey, and I went to look for the pictures, and I looked at the pictures and stuff, and it was pretty... Yeah, it was like when I just saw the boxes, I was going, like, I don't know which one that one is. So other people aren't going to know what they are. So good. So when they ask me, I can say there is a link at the bottom and I need to go look at it myself. I just mm -hmm. kind of stopped right there because I knew we were meeting tonight and wanted to get that out there because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's like, well, I don't know what that is. You know, and, and, and instead of scrolling on down, you're just trying to take the survey and you're a little lost in there. So, okay, I will make sure to tell people. Yeah, that. and that Blue Cross grant, that's 100% funded. Um, all the city has to provide is the land and within 2% grade, and then it's pretty much turnkey. They come in, take care of everything else. Okay. Can you find that survey on the Liburn webpage as well? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's on that, and it was in it was in Facebook also. It was on Facebook also. All right. Anybody else? So I need to back up just for a second, Dave, to baseball. We had a little bit of a conversation, and I, I meant to ask you about equipment. We have some equipment that was um, the city had, and I guess it went through several, you know, when Frankie and them had it, and then when the strikers had it, 
uh, that was rec league equipment. So we do have quite a bit of that. Um, I think most kids now have their own batting helmet maybe and their own bat, but we do have some of that. I think we have six to eight, maybe 10 sets of catcher's equipment for different age groups. Um, we ordered stuff for that we're gonna need today anyway, pitching rubbers, bases, uh, a couple portable mounds, base plugs. We've ordered all that. We hope to get donations for balls. Um, we ordered 12 batting tees today. Um, so I think we're gonna be set up pretty good for equipment. Um, we may need some T-ball balls, some soft toss balls. Okay. Um, but as far as that goes, if if kids show up without any, with a, we do have some gloves. So hopefully kids will show up with stuff. But if they don't, I think we can probably take care of them also. All right, good. I I, I meant to ask that earlier, and I forgot. I apologize. Uh, is this the new logo? Is that why we have this? Well, that is not the new. That's what we hope to use for the shirts to kind of push that out. Um, <laughs> So that's what's going to get screened on our T-shirts oh, okay. that we're going to distribute. I like it. Um, if you, on your packet, there's another logo on the top left. We may make some banners out of that and put those around town. Um, so we're trying to incorporate the, the city's logo on that one that you have. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the updated one or yes. not. That is. Yeah. You have this one and then you have that one. Uh, Why wouldn't we have the same? Well, we're trying to put the city logo on everything that we have when we initially started. The one on the top left is the one we wanted to go to. It was going to cost more to screen that one just due to the complexity of it and the colors involved in it. Mm -hmm. So if we can go with the one that actually has the city logo in it, it's basically two colors. Okay. I like it. It's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't on here. I just wanted to tell you guys what a great job you did for July the 4th. That was awesome. The band Phoenix Rising was good. Uh, Amy put on a great show. Uh, so you all did a wonderful job. I think I've been going to those things since, I don't know, a long time. I think that's the biggest crowd that I've ever seen. There was a lot of people there. So, uh, that, that was awesome. And I know it's been a while since we've met. We had to go through uh, some some dates. And hopefully next month, August 15th, will be our next meeting at 6 p.m. That being said, I call this meeting adjourned.